So, I left yesterday about meningitis. Everybody remember the word on meningitis? What kind of isolation do we keep on meningitis? Droplet. Droplet. What are the main signs and symptoms on meningitis? We got to review, very important, on knowing meningitis. Yes, uh, what are the main signs and symptoms on meningitis patients are? Everyone have to know. Number one, it's infection. It starts with fever. And what I said, the second thing, photophobia. And remember, when your patient has meningitis, and they are sensitive to not only the light, but the noise. Sometimes in your question, maybe quiet environment, non-stimulating environment is important. And so remember, photophobia, fever is high, temperature, and number three, I said kerning sign, and number four, we had on page number 13, is the Bruduski sign. Everyone should know Kearney is, I said, for the legs. And Bruduski is neck. So they are so uh, stiff that they have a lot of pain when you are moving in different directions. So that's very important. How do you diagnose meningitis? How do we diagnose meningitis? I talked about that yesterday. And it's on the second line, lumbar puncture. What do we do? Lumbar puncture. And what did I say in lumbar puncture? The main answer I said would be, what would be low here? In the first paragraph, the last line, decreased glucose. Everything is high. So remember, everything is going to be high. Only one thing would be confirmed diagnosis for meningitis when glucose level is low. And what do you prevent meningitis patient? What is the highest priority here? Seizure. Number one priority is what? Seizure. Because they have fever and they have photophobia right down on the side. You are preventing them from seizure. What are you monitoring them? ICP are there. And how, what do you do? You put them in isolation. And what are we giving them is antibiotic. Everyone is okay. Prevention from seizure. Few wording. If we know the few wording, then we understand our question. So meningitis, we talked about it, and we said in meningitis, very important, your isolation. And what was I said yesterday, I'm just reviewing a little bit, which was on the last page, and was about your spino bifida babies. And what is another word? Is on page 12. Is spino bifida was on page 12. And we did yesterday. And what did I say? The babies are born with spino bifida. It's a, another name is called myelomeningocele. And what do you monitor babies who are born with myelomeningocele are? So you have on page 12, and it says myelomeningocele. And where you have the word myelomeningocele, those who are not here, you can highlight the word neurological assessment. What are we monitoring them? Neurological. And what did we say on that in neurological assessment are, number one, you're monitoring ICP, but what is the biggest problem with these babies are? Anybody remember what did I say? What do you monitor babies who are born with myelomeningocele are? Yes, they have a sac. And what is the sac? In lumbosacral area, right here in the lower part. So what part of the body is affected? The lower extremity. And the babies are what? They are paralyzed. And what is the problem with the babies here are? They cannot pee. Number one, problem with them. And number two, the problem with constipation. And what are you going to do until they do the surgery on spinal bifida babies are? You cover the sac. And how do we cover the sac with normal saline? And two things we remember is a sterile technique. Why? You are preventing infection. What infection is common with the babies would be with born with Milo meningocele meningitis. So you got to use a sterile technique. What is the second problem? You have rupture. It can rupture, so you got to be careful when you are changing the 
dressing. Very important teaching. What did I say? How do you empty the bladder without catheter? What is the word is called when you are applying the pressure and you are emptying the bladder? What is that word is called? Creed method. You got to know. We are nurses, and the word is called creed. C R E E D. Creed. Creed means you are not putting catheter and you are applying pressure. Maybe one question. Child has myelomeningocele, baby did not pee. What do you do to empty the bladder without catheter? And the word is called Creed method. Then they will do the surgery, child is going home, and you are monitoring what is the highest risk for these babies are. Number one, keep it in mind, they're non-ambulatory. They're wheelchair bound. And number two, all their life, they have problem in what? Pee, bladder, they can pee. They have to have catheter. So what is the complication is going to be is UTI. What do you monitor when they grow up? Renal failure. So they have a problem with renal failure and UTI. And they have to be monitored all the time for bladder. That means they may live on Foley catheter, in and out catheter, or maybe they have they use the word intermittent catheter. So remember, you got to connect the knowledge. It doesn't come in one day. Keep coming, keep doing, keep reviewing, do your question. So I will move on on after meningitis. On that package is autism. What is autism is I will say highlight the word on page number thirteen is you have mental disorder. It is a mental problem. And in the first line, it says the word is impairment in social interaction. So what is the problem here? Impairment. What, where is the impairment? Social interaction. And verbal and nonverbal communication. They are not able to communicate. A lot of questions when you will do, what is autism? The first answer may be impairment in what? Verbal and nonverbal communication. Cause is unknown and prognosis is poor. So babies are born and they have autism. And autism is a problem in what? Communication and they cannot follow through, they cannot understand. So impairment in social interaction. So that's a good wording, social interaction. Data collection, underline the word disturbance, child experience as disturbance, they feel disturbed. And second line is physiological or social and physical, social and language skill. So the problem with them are social and language skills. They are not able to communicate as we all can communicate. Unable to relate to others. That means there is a problem in communication, problem in understanding. They can't understand, they can't communicate. And so the problem, the wording is, problem in social language skill, we already said is the problem with verbal and nonverbal. Third line, the child likes to play happily alone. They don't want to play with others. And if you disturb them, they're busy, they're own. That will go in temper tantrum. They don't like to be disturbed. So they're busy, they're own uh, themselves. Next line, the word is acolonia. What is the word acolonial? Is heard speech. Whatever they heard the word, they're repeating for hours and hours. And this acolonial word also, I talked about this word in mental health. So repeating word in schizophrenia patient also do it. So that means they're not making any right communication. One word they heard, they keep repeating that word over and over. And remember, they're playing alone. They have no connection with others. And then you will go, they have unusual attachment. And they display bizarre behavior. They may be having spinning, rocking movement, so they are not with the world together. They are in their own life. What do you do when you have a child? Autism ch children are, they're not safe. They cannot follow the directions. If they leave the house, they may not be able to come back. They won't even know where they are. So safety is very important. 
intervention. So remember how they are wording in your questions are very important to know impairment social interaction, a colonial word. And what do they do? They repeatedly doing the same thing over and over. Maintain consistency. How do you handle the child? Consistency. That's a good word. All your peers work. Whenever you are teaching a child, you don't want to move different things a day. Keep them consistently, whatever you are teaching them. And write down the word routine. Maintain a routine and consistently. Use picture board. They don't remember the things. Maybe our pictures are good. S communication for safety is avoid demand. They're not going to do what you want to do it because they have their own mind. A special program, support the parents. Very hard to take care of these children. So support, they need it. So autism, we should know, has a problem with the child. Safety is important. You got to make a routine, use pictures, and maintain safety. Next is shaken baby syndrome. What is the word in shaken baby syndrome you are monitoring? Child is admitted with shaken baby syndrome. Underline the first word. It's a intracranial trauma. You are shaking the baby heart. And what is the trauma? Intracranial trauma, number one. And then why? Because you are shaking too hard, violently. And underline the word in the first line, subdural hematoma. There may be a question, what do you monitor in shaken baby syndrome? Number one, maybe it's an intracranial injury or a trauma. And what are you monitoring? There is a bleeding. Where is the bleeding? In subdural, that's in the brain. In the dura part goes in the brain, the lining, and the child is having bleeding. Second line, you will go, there's no external trauma. External trauma is not there. There's no sign of external trauma to the baby. Second line, retinal hemorrhage. So two answers are here. What do you monitor child who has shaken baby syndrome? First thing, remember, it's an intracranial hemorrhage. They might give you the answer is sub, you monitor subdural hemorrhage. What is the third answer is here? Retinal hemorrhage. So what are you monitoring here? What would you monitor? Underline the word cerebral edema and ICP. So your answers are when there is edema and bleeding, you're monitoring ICP. What do you do? Intervention. It's an abuse. It's a suspected abuse. And I underline the word reporting. Local agency, state agency, whatever the policy, wherever you're working, make sure we are reporting that it's abuse. So it needs to be reported. Second line, very important in abuse question. When you see any patient or any child you are suspecting abuse. What is our responsibility in the second line to maintain safe environment? So your answer is going to be, you've got to monitor. And you're preventing further injury while the child is in the hospital. So what are we preventing here? Injury. And what is it? Safe environment. That means we've got to keep eye who's coming, what's happening to the child. Next thing in your abuse question, these are all your abuse answer. What do you do? Reporting, safe environment, number two. And next line, assess the parent's strength and the weakness. Why the child has been abused, look at and find out the weakness in their parents. Page number 13, those who just came in, go on page number 13, chicken baby syndrome. Support system. Presence or absence, what do they have support system to help them? Assess family stress, what kind of stress they have. If shaken baby syndrome is suspected, what are you monitoring? Because it's a subdural hemorrhage. What are we monitoring here? Level of consciousness and ICP. So everyone should know it's abuse. And one, two wording is important here, subdural hemorrhage, retinal hemorrhage, 
and level of consciousness. Next page, we will move on. Eczema. Everyone should know good about what I will be talking about in some of infection control on and off in these pages. And the word is called atopic dermatitis. Either they give you the word atopic dermatitis or eczema. What is eczema is, underline the word, inflammatory process. They say inflammation. Where? Epidermis. Highlight that word. And what does it cause inflammatory process? Pruritic lesion. Pruritus means itching. So what is eczema is? Is inflammation word. Second word, remember the word is what? Is lesion and itching or pruritus. Now what is your goal would be to prevent the child who has eczema? Underline in the goal are prevent infection and reduce inflammation. So what is eczema is? Itching, pruritus. And what is it causing? Inflammation and infection. So what is your goal as a nurse? To reduce infection and reduce inflammation. And how? Prevent what? Itching. So what do you do for itching? Maybe your nails question, trim the nails. Remember, what do you do if a small child? Elbow restrain, keep that in mind, because why elbow restrain, they won't be able to do a scratch. Cutting nails is important. Sometimes patients, you may use the nice mitten to protect them, and you can give them the itching medication. So some of the treatment I will talk, but your question, remember how your questions are. What is eczema is, what are you preventing here? Your answer is going to be preventing inflammation, preventing infection, because all when we scratch is leading to infection. What is your goals are underneath? It says hydrate the skin and prevent infection. So we are going to talk about hydration. Now, it does have, because of asthma, asthma comes from allergies. Allergies in the children can be, in the children's small infant, two to six months, can be in the older child, two to three years, and pre-adolescent, and may continue early adult year, if they have from the childhood. Now, what is the data collection? You've got to know the right wording. When they're saying, what are you preventing, or what is the problem in eczema here, is your infection. Now I will move into what would you see if you have someone with acute eczema. Underline the word excoriation. <clears throat> so what would you see? Excoriation, because they're eating. Chronic, you will underline the word alopecia. They start losing the hair on that area. Acute excoriation, chronic alopecia, and thickening of the skin because they're scratching. There may be the word fissure. A lot of questions, you will see the word alopecia. Now, what do you do intervention are to prevent from itching? Avoid any irritants such as soap, fabric softener, powder, diaper, and hydrate the skin, and how? Underline the second line, oatmeal bath. You can give them cornstarch bath, also add their cornstarch oatmeal, and you can give them the bath. And prevent scratching, gloves. Maybe you have elbow restraint, maybe a socks, maybe a mitten, and maybe your itching medication. Infection, how do you know monitor sign of infection. So if they have, child has eczema, what sign would you see them in infection are, underline the word, honey-colored crusting. Honey-colored crusting, whenever you see, is showing is infection. And monitor the sign for infection, mild detergent. You will use them, rinse them thoroughly, the clothes, and second wash of the clothes may be without detergent, just with the water. Next medication can be a steroids. Underline that word steroids. If they ask you how do you apply the steroid, 
we are going to apply the steroids very thin layer. Never pick up any ointment to apply thick because thin layer absorbing through the skin. So how do we apply steroid? Thin layer. So everyone, these are very important answers are here. Everyone should know eczema and the dermatitis, atopic dermatitis is same. And what is the problem is itching. What is the itching is causing here? Infection and inflammation. So what do we do here? Monitor acute signs are excoriation. Acute attack, they keep on scratching. The skin is peeling off and excoriation. Chronic sign of eczema is alopecia and scratch because they keep on scratching. Answers to prevention, remember medication prevents scratching, a steroids is very important, oatmeal bath is important, and cornstarch and rest is preventive method. I will move on, empatico. Empatico is very important for your NCLEX. Empatico is a contact precaution. All your skin goes under contact, keep that in mind. And what is the word we called on skin is integumentary system. So a contact precaution. What is empatico? Underline the word bacterial and it's contagious. What is it? Contagious. And that's why you got to maintain what precaution? Contact precaution. So it's contagious. And infection, mouth, hand, neck, and the extremity. Lesions are, it are pustules, and they have edema and redness. Underline the word crusting stage, and they have exudate. And leaving honey-colored crust that cover on ulcerated base. So these are the rashes, and lesion begins on as a pustules, edema, and redness. So empatico, very common, I want you to add on the top is hot weather. Hot season is very common. And staphylococcus, not the strep. A staphylococcus infection is caused by for empatico. Data collections are, they have lesion and red, they are draining, crusting, and they are itching, prorotic and bruising it can cause. What precautions you will go? Cross out the word standard. We are going in contact precaution. Allow the lesion to dry. You are using antibacterial soap, which is, is called Physohex. Highlight that. Physohex is a cleanser for the skin. Second, first line, you can also apply warm compress to the skin. Antibiotic, it's infection. Linen and cloth must be washed separately. Hand washing is important. And when does the child can go to school? Write down two weeks after lesions are resolved. They dry two weeks after the lesions are resolved, child is okay to go to school. I added here on the board also, Conjunctivitis, just to remind you, conjunctivitis is also contact precaution. It's an eye infection. So make sure just add it anytime you're going to see it. You do have in an isolation packet, but remember that's an eye infection, but I added here conjunctivitis. If you have it, that goes in contact precaution. That's the eye infection. And anytime you have eye or skin infection, do not share towels and always use your gloves. Next page, I'm going to move on, pediculosis. Pediculosis are head lysis. Pediculosis is very common sites are, underline the word occiput. What is the occiput in the back, in the back of the head, very common area. And I want you to add there, now you always see those white sacs, small, small white thing, and they are attached with the here. So you can say the white part or the white sacs, they are attached to the hair. So head lysis are in the hair, but are attaching, but more common area, the hair in the back is the occiput. And when you will see them, they are in the hair, but is the most common word is occiput. They are more white, you will see the flakes, and they are attached to the 
hair shaft. The whole hair, we call the hair shaft. And behind the ear and the eyebrows, wherever we have hair, you can see them, very common area, occiput, eyelashes, pubic, pubic area. And if someone has pubic area, could be suspected sign of sexual abuse. And that could be sexual abuse. And pediculosis is a sign of abuse. Is why? Because you're not cleaning. And that could be also considered. But pubic, yes. And they are attached, underlying the bird. Hairs are uh, on the eggs, are on hair shaft, close to the scalp. And I just said to the occiput. So everyone in your question, where do you have pediculosis on the hair shaft word and occiput? You can have all on the uh, on the other area. Avoid sharing when somebody has pediculosis is avoid sharing brushes, hairbrush, hats, towels, and bedding. Examine the contact. Anybody contact, you have patients you are talking, any family member has, check everyone because you can get it. It's a contact precaution. So what precautions you will take on pediculosis, remember, is contact. So you can write on the top the contact. And what do they use? I wrote it down here is on pediculosis, premethrin and NYX. They can use that, premethrin medication, and they can leave it only. Whenever you're applying the medication, you only leave for five to 10 minutes, no longer. And then what do you do? You wash them. So I wrote it down, the word premethrin, P-R-E-M-E-T-H-R-I-N. And it's also called NYX, N-I-X. And that can be applied. There are shampoos you have. There are medications we have. And that can be applied. And shampoo and hair towel. After you wash them, you dry them and remove the NYX by the uh, fine comb. And you can repeat it again. Toys must be sealed. Something you cannot wash. You can put them in plastic bag and seal them and leave it alone for two weeks. Hair brushes and combs must be washed and soak them in hot water, underline the word 130 degree Fahrenheit for 15 minutes. Bedding can be sealed, something you can wash for 10 to 14 days. So remember, pediculosis very important. Where is the pediculosis are? We all should know common site is in occiput. And I said the eggs are, the white sac are on the hair shaft, which are more closer to the scalp, and that is more common in the back. And premethrin medication. I want you to add there also in the house if you have it, and even in the hospital, vacuum floor. And in the children, play area must be vacuumed because they can be dropping. So maybe in your precaution, vacuum is also important. Next is scabies. A scabies question, again, is what precaution do you take it? Isolation, contact. So write down pediculosis, contact. Scabies is contact. Now what is scabies are? They're parasitic skin and they burrows into the epidermis. And also, they are thread-like lining. I want you to add the word thread-like. You will see them in the line, and main, sometimes you will have the word thread-like lining. And they lay the egg, and they burrows after four to five weeks. The egg hatches three to five days, and they become mature and complete the cycle. If you can remember all of that, but very important is a parasites and the boros word is important and you will say the word thread-like lining. And sometimes they might use the word fine gray or red line. They are not in a special rashes. They are more in the line and they go deeper, boros. And those are scabies. And how do you diagnose them scabies? By looking the even the skin, 
But you got to do is what? You got to look under the microscope. So they have to scrape the skin and look it just to confirm that is the uh, scabies. Scabies is very common in the hospital, common in the nursing home. And when you're going from one to another patient and one has you already spread to the others, one job to another job. So very important, anytime you have rashes, find out what kind of rashes. When you're working with your patient, you see some rashes, have someone look at those rashes because very common scabies and that comes in thread-like, fine gray, red or red lining, in the line. How do you treat them? I wrote the word here. I want you to add linding, L-I-N-D-A-N-E, linding, L-I-N-D-A-N, linding. And we also use the word quell, very common, linden or quell. And for that linden, I want you to write down, not to be used under two years of age, children. They cannot use for question, your question. Any questions you're doing? Under two years, they don't use. Older is fine, but children. And they don't use, why? because it's caused central nervous system toxicity. So it causes toxicity, so we do not use on the children. So toxicity. So everyone should know is contact precaution, linden or quell is not used under two years of age. So any question on that is important. And you, what do you do? How long do you leave it? 10 to 12 hours, you can leave it. So we give shower first to the patient, clean them, and then you apply, leave it on the cream for 12 hours, and then you bathe them again next morning. You can always repeat it uh, after one week. So that means it should be all the nurses who are taking care of the patient, morning, evening, night shift, and family members who are coming, they all need to be treated because you're going to take it home. So scabies is very quickly you catch from contact. So nothing you're removing from patient's room. Anything, whatever they have, you have to wash them before and also after you have given second treatment, you do the same treatment, washing the linen and the patient's clothing. They must be washed separately. So everyone is okay, scabies is the wording I said is linden, you are not using. Premethrin, I wrote it for your pediculosis. Both of them are contact precaution. Underneath you guys have, in the same page, is the word is called ringworm. When we are talking about ringworm, tinea and tinea capitis word is on the scalp. Corpius word is on the body. Pedis word is on the feet. And curis is on the groin and also they are very dry scales and they are causing itching. But what is this tinea word is? Underneath it says fungal. It's a fungal infection. And remember, the fungus grows more in moisture. You got to keep the shoes off, take it out, changing, changing socks, and changing the linen, and there it's not contagious, but yes, you got to apply the ointment and keep the body clean. Now I will move on. So we talked about scabies. Remember, in your NCLEX exam, a lot of questions are on isolation. And they are drug questions. So any drugs comes across, look through, look through in your prevention, what would you do? I will move on a little bit here about uh, on the same page, infant. Now what is the age of infant? I want you to add there 28 days to one year, they consider is infant. A lot of books you will see, a lot of questions you will see, not from newborn, but they say it's 28 days and to a year we are saying is the infant. So I want you to add that. I want you the respiration for infant are normal 30 to 60 per minute. So that's the respiration. You have everything and growth and development, very important, we all should know for your exam. So I said respiration, 30 to 60, 
and 28 days to one year, you have infant age. Number one is very important, weight. Five to six months. By six months, the baby's weight is double. And triple at 12 months. That's important. So triple at 12 months and six months, whatever the child weight was, was double. Head circumference question. At birth, two to three centimeter is greater than the chest circumference. So at head circumference at the birth, two to three centimeter is greater. But age one to two, it becomes equal. Underline that word. So remember, is the head circumference is greater than the chest, but then by age one to two, it becomes equal. Now, you guys can read through your teething. I have on number three. I'm going to read the special ones, but make sure you guys read through because you got to know your growth and development. Number four is iron stores from the birth by four months. Iron are stored in the body for four months. Human milk is best less than six months old. Infants should remain on human milk or iron fortified milk for first year. So because iron is lacking. So what is the best for the babies are going to be is the breastfeeding or human milk or if you're giving the other, the formula, the feeding should be with what? Iron fortified because you want to give the milk. So in your question. Next page. I want you to go on, when do you start giving solid food? On number five, five to six months. And give them slowly, one at a time. Number seven is very important. What is good to give the babies are the rice cereal, fruits and vegetable, and the egg. Egg yolk, you can start earlier, but the egg white should be given at the end of the a yeah, lot of allergies with the egg white. So egg yolk, you can give them. Egg white can be given at the end of the uh, first year. Number nine is important. What kind of play they have solitary? Number 10, infant's car seat. Very important that you know or do you put the infant and until they are what uh, weight is that. So you put them in the back seat and going on more is the car safety. So number 10, make sure you guys know car safety and introduction of the baby's food, and that's important, and the egg is good, iron is good. I will move on on toddler. Toddler age is one to three years. So at their one to three years is the toddler. And Apical pulse for toddler is 80 to 125, around three years is okay, normal. And so make sure we know some pulse rate because 80 to 125, apical pulse. And you will move on on number one, head circumference increases one inches between one to two years. You will go on. Number four is dentist is important by this age to visit. Number five, allow toddler to never allow toddler to fall asleep with bottle because bottle containing with juice, soda, and sweetener causing the teeth problem, which is called the dental caries. Number six, cup at their 12 months. They can use the cup by 12 months. Now, you have all that, and I want you to write down in there, uh, I'm missing here, how do they play toddler? So add on the side, parallel play. They don't share, they don't play together. They play side by side, and the word is called parallel play. Everyone should know the play, because those questions are very common. And then you have number 11, bowel and bladder control, develop. 
before the bladder, bowel is the first one they controlled earlier. Number 12, is three years old child achieved good, fairly good bowel and bladder control? Number 13, you have all toys because they're walking around, push and pull toys, finger painting, all that toys, we can read it. I want you to add in toddler, R, is you already added play uh, parallel, egocentric work. Egocentric means they are themselves. They don't share. Everything is mine. Ego, they, we use the word egocentric. Not sharing is my toys. Temper tantrum, I want you to add in toddler. Any question from one year? Any child is ten, one year question, two years, three years? Yes, very common temper tantrum, and parallel play. Erickson theory, very important. What is the Erickson theory on toddler? Autonomy versus shame. We do have in a separate, but make sure write down, because this is the dangerous aid when they're looking all over autonomy, and you got to give what? Safety for the children. Autonomy versus shame. If they can do autonomy and you tell them, they feel what? More shame. So autonomy versus shame. Next page, we will move on, is the preschool. And I want you to add there three to five years. Three to five years is called preschool. And number one, they grow about three inches per year. So every year, three inches per year, two and a half to three, approximately, even you know three inches is good. Number two, at the end, by five, age five, they're about 43 inches. But number one is good, if you will remember, three inches. And number three, gain five pounds per year. That means every year in your question, if they say, child gain only three pounds last year, that means I did not get the normal weight gain. So it's good to know is number three, gaining weight, five pounds per year. Is number six, imaginative play. And also you can say here, for them are their plain imaginary play. And next is, I want you to add here, there is in some of the books they have and came in the exam, in the exam cram book is three years they can copy a circle. So write down at age three, they can make a circle. Four years, they can draw a square. And five years, they can draw a diamond shape. You do have in the different books, different growth and development. Three years circle, four years square. And five years, the diamond they can draw. And that came in one time in the question. So it's good. If you do have exam cram book, you do have some growth and development, read through. Because you must know some early growth and development, and this, those questions are high in and cut. So some idea, you should know what can they draw by this age. And you do have in the exam cram book, those question came. A school age. What is a school age is? Six to 12 years. Six to 12 years. Number one, they grow two inches per year. Number three, the weight gain. Average weight 46 pounds at age six to and eight years. Then they have permanent teeth and deciduous teeth they're losing, number four. Number six, rules and rituals are important for their play and game. And what kind of they play? Right down on the side, associate play. So school age, associate means they can associate. They can play very well with the group, associate play. So every age, when we are moving on, Infant, toddler, preschool, everyone growth is a little different. So you must know some of the growth and development. Underneath I have is Erickson theory. We all should know 
for NCLEX, your Erickson theory. I want you to add here where it says infant, add there 28 days to one year. Now, if you can, buy to 18 months, but add there 28 to, days to one year. What is the infancy according to Erickson? First thing, what does Erickson theory is? Highlight the word psychosocial. In some question, they can ask you, what is Erickson theory is psychosocial? And infants are 28 days to one year, trust versus mistrust. That is the one we got to memorize. Second one, where it says early childhood, you can add their toddler. And what is toddler R? One, two, three months. Autonomy versus shame and doubt. That is toddler. Everyone, we all should know. Next one, third one, you add the word preschool. Late childhood is called preschool and three to five, you can add, every book has a little variation, and initiative, now when we are preschool, they want to do things, initiative, but they can do right, and they go into guilt, so initiative versus guilt. A school age, six to 12 is good, industrial and inferiority. Adolescence, you have identity, and you get confusion. Early adulthood, intimacy, and isolation. A lot of time questions are middle adulthood. What is middle adulthood is 35 to 65. Generative versus a stagnation. And late is more than 65, integrity versus despair. So I would advise everyone, you guys have it here. You don't need to go back, open books, just memorize. You've got to know some of your growth and development. Next page, I have another growth and development, which is moral development. What is in moral development by, underlying the word, Lawrence Coburn? And what is in moral development we have here? So there are different psychologists and they came with the growth and development according to their theory. So what is his development is moral development. And so any questions on that moral there? And remember, he divided in three group. And what are the three areas are, number one, level one. What is level one is called pre-conventional. Pre-conventional and I want you to underline pre-conventional means are, underline the word egocentric. Egocentric is their, their own and no awareness of right and wrong. And they are more egocentric. Then even if you remember the wording that what was uh, Lawrence Cooper theory is on moral. And what is in moral was there is number one, level one. So there might maybe one single question, what kind of development he has, level one, level two, and what is level one is called pre-conventional. What is pre-conventional is egocentric, is me, mine. Level two is called conventional. And what is conventional, highlight the word, confirms rules and follow pleasing other. So they try to please everyone. They follow the rule. And third level is called post-conventional. What is in post-conventional, you highlight the word where it says stage six, is ethical. Ethical principle. Ethical means right and wrong. So this is the three theory we are talking here. If we have here moral development theory, and level one, pre-conventional. Level two is conventional. Level three is post-conventional. Word is egocentric, follow the rules. Second one, third one is more ethical principle. What is right and wrong? Ethical is important word in our life. And now last one, you have fraud psychosocial development. He has on the stages, oral stage, and toilet training, phallic stage, latency stage, and genital stage. So these are the three. Erickson theory, we all should know. 
This one you can know at least through the stages of the theory, and he de de depended on psychosocial development. Next page, we will move on. Yes, on the next page, we have vital sign. On the vital sign is newborn babies. Very important that we all know apical pulse rate, 120 to 140. Sleeping time, 180. Respiration is important. Toddler, you have apical 80 to 120. One year's age, 90 to 130. So look for the respiration. One year, 20 to 40. I do have some more skills here. Two to three months, babies, they can smile. They can turn the head from side to side. They can hold it in the midline. Four to five months, roll over. This is the time that they can fall. So four to five months. And social, underline the word, social interaction. They start looking at the people. Six to seven months, they can sit with support. Eight to nine months, sit steadily unsupported. Crowd begin and then stand without support. 10 to 11 months can change from prone to sitting position and they can stand and walk while holding on the furniture. So it's all up to you guys how you can look through but you must recognize. And remember, never compare your child in the exam because standardized, these growths are standard. Your child may be doing very early, and it may be possible. So when you're reading your question, don't think, oh, my child did this, maybe that's the best answer. I would advise you look through a little bit growth and development, especially newborn babies, and uh, what is normal in the newborn babies. And as they're moving, toddlers, safeties are there, and eczema, all that we talked about are very important. Now, I'll move on on the next page. On the next page, you have dysplasia of the hip. Babies are born, very, very good to know, dysplasia. You're assessing a baby who's newly born, and they may have dysplasia, means dislocation of the hip. And what are the signs are? Head of the femur is improperly seated in the acita so what is the head of the femur is fixing here, and this is the part in the hip, where is it in the place? So that's normal, and the head of the femur improperly is not fitting properly. That's a dislocation word. And you are looking at the baby and at the joint of the hip. But next, so what is hip dislocation? Remember the word? The head of the femur is not fitting. The word is called acetabulum. Next is, is pre a sign of dysplasia of hip arc. Number one, alternately click. What is alternately click R? Audible sound. You hear the sound when the hips are abducting. When you're bringing closer, what we call when we bring closer, what we call when you bring the abduction. When you take it away, what do we call? Abduction. So what happened when we are examining the baby's legs and you're taking away, what do you hear? The click sound. And that is called is what? Are tonally click. We got to know the wording. If you they throw the wording, baby is born. Where, where do you see or tonally click in hip dislocation? Are we clear? Number two, early signs. What is that meaning? Shortening of the leg. Whenever your hip is dislocated, your leg is going to be shorter. But they gave the name Alice sign. Number three, Trendelenburg sign. What is a Trendelenburg sign? Is asymmetry of the thigh and the gluteal fold. So if you stand the baby or you turn them, you can see the hips are not in a, the folds are unequal. Are we clear? So that is called asymmetry word. That means they're not in the same shape. And gluteal fold. And when this, if they walk and stand, they will show more lordiosis. So remember, three signs are in dysplasia of hip or tonally 
Alice sign and Trendelin birth sign. We all should know those signs. Now, what do they do before they do the surgery? They put it on, it's called pavlic harness. Everyone should know pavlic harness is used. You do have picture in your Sounders book, and you had a picture also in your adult health when you have done. And it's more like they're keeping the legs in a proper position. So it's called pavlic harness. And it causes adduction. Pavlic harness should be checked. They keep it continuously on and should be checked, underline the word, every one to two weeks. And six month need adjustment, less than six months. So they will need the adjustment. Worn continuously for three to six months. So everyone should know public harness worn for continuously for six months. To maintain, why? To maintain flexion, abduction, and external rotation. So what are they maintaining? by keeping this public harness. So child has to wear all the time. And what is it would be to maintain? So in your question, wear continuously, you are assessing the skin, and what does, why do you keep it on for flexion, abduction, and rotation? After six months, they may plan to do the surgery. And surgery can be done closed an open reduction. What is the meaning closed? Mean manually. You can do fixing the bone. Closed means you haven't opened the skin, you haven't done the surgery. Anytime when I will talk about the skeletal system, I'll be talking about the traction, fixing bone, and when they're fixing the bone, closed is manually, basically by hand. Open reduction means the surgery. And they play and put them in the surgical fixation of the hip. And the child would come back with, underline the word, hip spica. And what is a hip spica is? When they're saying hip spica, that means they may have from abdomen, and they may have below the leg, and they may have in between the bar. So that means hip spica are covering the stomach, goes and separating the leg you might have seen in the pictures, and that is called your hip spica. What do you monitor on hip spica? Abdominal distension, because it's covering the abdomen. What are you monitoring here? Is nausea and vomiting, bladder distension, and constipation, if they have a problem. And so, remember, the dysplasia word is very important. Improperly, the head of the femur is not seated where in acetabulum, so it's called dislocation. Everyone should know the wording here, orthonally click, we have, Ellis sign we have, and number third, Trendelenburg sign, and public harness, everyone should know public harness is worn as continuously monitor for the skin and why you're doing that, and afterwards, if the surgery is done, they will have what kind of surgery? Hip spica cast. Next is congenital foot question. Child are born with the congenital foot problem and is also called another word, talipus aquinas. Talipus aquinas means the foot is turned inward and causing child to walk with the outer part of the foot. So feet are not normal, they're turned inward. So the word we call Congenital, they use the word club foot. You can add that C L U B club foot or talipus aquinas. So it's a congenital feet problem. Congenital, you do have word club foot in the second line. Congenital club foot. Reason could be intrauterine growing. There is not enough room, they're not positioned correctly. Tetragenically associated, maybe congenital abnormalities. And true club. If they ask you what is a true club, is bony abnormality. So there is a bone abnormality, is a true club. But it could be also with congenitally and the positioning. But when the babies are born and their feet are not normal, 
what would you be teaching and what would be we are monitoring. So let's move in the treatment. Short after the birth, application of cast. Underline the word cast. So baby is born, their feet are not normal. What do they do right away? They put the cast on the feet. And the cast is changed, underlined, and manipulated, second line, weekly. For how long? For six to 12 weeks. So weekly means what? You tell the mother, the mother has to bring the baby every week because what? They're going to change the cast. So what? Because they're so soft bone, they can manipulate easily the shape and they can change it every weekly the cast is applied. So they're bringing the shape of the feet. So they're not doing surgery right away. What do they do? Appl application of cast. And what do we do in application of cast? The cast is changed every weekly. So your teaching question is, make sure the mother understand the baby has to come weekly basis to change the cast. Next is surgical correction. If that didn't help, for 12 weeks and they may have to go surgically repaired or pin fixation. Whenever there is a question on pin, what do you monitor as a nurse? Is drainage, infection, redness, any swelling and also tendon followed by casting. They may do surgery, again they apply the cast and after the cast, maybe child has to wear the braces. So braces, cast, and surgery is the treatment. But one thing we remember, the word talipus aquinas word, sometimes they don't give club foot, they throw the word talipus aquinas, that means the feet are not normal. And remember, one word is also called true club, and what is a true club foot is where is really the bones are abnormal. I will move on sickle cell, very important. We all should know sickle cell disease. Now what is in sickle cell, main wording here, is hemoglobin A is replaced by hemoglobin B. That's important wording. Hemoglobin A is replaced by hemoglobin B. Second line, insufficient oxygen cause cell to assume sickle and shape them and they become rigid and underline the word clumping. We all know the word clumping. So what happened in sickle cell? Hemoglobin A converting in hemoglobin B and the cells are clumping. That's important word. Now the next line is precipitating sickling factor R, fever and emotion. So what do you avoid here with fever here? Infection. So remember, write down the word infection. And stress, it can precipitate. And last line, highlight the word increasing red blood cell destruction. So what happened? The cells, when they're clumping, what are we destroying here is the red blood cell. And that is a leading into uh, anemia. You see how your questions are sometimes nothing is there in your question and answer maybe what do you prevent them from infection. I'll be clear. So that's why where it says fever, make sure you write down one word, write down one word. Remember the word is clumping and hemoglobin A2, hemoglobin B. Vaso-occlusive crisis. When there is a question and child is admitted, with vaso-occlusive crisis, what are you monitoring? Three symptoms, everyone should know. What are the three symptoms are? Number one, fever. Number two, there is swelling and joint pain. Underline the word hand, feet, joint. And also, so there is a pain in the joints and the pain in the abdomen. So three things we got to memorize. Occlusive crisis, what are you monitoring the child here? Fever, abdominal pain, and the joints pain. There is a swelling and they have a lot of pain. And some question I came across and they had acute leg pain. So add that acute leg pain. And they had question and they had hand and foot syndrome. 
that means the pain, had foot syndrome in occlusive crisis. So everyone, three symptoms, very important. In occlusive crisis, fever, abdominal pain, and the joint pain. Those three are important. And the wording, sometimes they didn't give these wording. And what do you monitor? Maybe hand foot syndrome. Maybe they have acute leg pain because the joints are paining. So those are important wording we need to connect. Second thing is called splenic sequestration. What is the word splenic sequestration is? Clumping of the blood in spleen. So where is it affecting occlusive crisis? The spleen. And that's why they had abdominal pain. So underline the word spleen. And they may give, what do you monitor is splenic sequestration. And underneath, write down, avoid palpation. Be avoid palpation on the abdomen. Why? Because it can cause spleen rupture. So clumping of blood, hypersplenism, uh, uh, spleen is affected and it can lead to rupture. Number three, aplastic crisis. What is aplastic crisis is, underline the word, diminished production of red blood cell and by viral and write down the word, what is a plastic crisis? What is a plastic anemia? What is a plastic anemia? Well, white blood cells, low red cells, and low pigment cells. Very good, but where? In bone marrow. Make sure write down the word bone marrow. That's why only a plastic anemia, where do we put them? In reverse isolation. <clears throat> That's why we got to prevent them from infection. So in our mind, everyone, we don't need the books. When you're doing your question, we understand well that child has a occlusive crisis. What are we looking here? Number one, I said they have fever, pain in abdomen, joint pain. What do you remember next word? Any question can be on abdomen. Why? Because the spleen is affected. Third thing, keep it in mind, what is it affecting here? The bone marrow. And that's why you're preventing the child from what? Infection. Next page, we'll move on. On next page, we have intervention. What do you do if the questions are crisis and child has an intervention? Number one, hydration. You've got to give the hydration. Give them normal saline, maybe an answer, IV fluid, maybe an answer, oral fluids, maybe an answer in you know, oral fluids, give them popsicle, give them popsicle, increasing fluid, and so fluid, number one. Next line, highlight the word oxygen, anything increase oxygenation, Maybe eight liter oxygen, give 10 liter oxygen. They need more oxygen. Third, second line, underline the word pain management. Pain management. And very important in pain management, next line. Demerol is not used. In your question, don't pick up the answer, Demerol. Why? Underline the word cause seizure and cause nervous system toxicity. What does it cause here? Nervous system toxicity. So we don't give Demerol. Next is position. Very important because the joints are painful and they are on knees. And control keeping the position extended. What is the meaning? Extend it. Keep them more straight. Don't bend the knee. And a lot of questions in your Saunders book on positioning on this. So how do you keep them? Keep the legs more extended. Elevate the head. <coughs> no more than 30 degrees. Why? Because if you sit more straight, what happened? The pressure is on the knee. See how your questions are? semi fowler's position is good. Don't make them very high. Don't make them sit too long because the pressure is going to be on the knees. So avoid the strain. No knee gets. 
What is the meaning niggets? Don't raise the foot of the bed. What happens when you raise it, the knee is going to be bending. So that will cause the pain. So remember positioning. Next is very high answer, diet. What diet do you give? Calories, protein, and you give folic acid. And so everyone remember few wording here is your questions are, you're checking circulation for them, fluid we said, and add there avoid infection. And that's number one. And some of the books, you have the word H-H-O-P. H-H-O-P. What is H would be is the hydration. Then H, hydration, maybe, so you can also add that hydration. Heat, you can apply on the there. Oxygenation and pain. And write down with the pain, no demerol. Everyone remember the word no demerol. When we say in GI, we give demerol, we don't give morphine, but here you don't give demerol. H, hydration. H, another heat. O, increase oxygen. P, pain. And in pain, you add there no demerol. So remember like that. So everyone, we memorize few things but the good answers. And what are those good answers are that make sure you're preventing them from infection, you're increasing fluid, you're giving oxygen, increasing oxygenation, decreasing their pain. And pain medication, you do not pick up the answer with Demrol. Everyone is okay about sickle cell anemia and do not forget, it affects the spleen and the bone marrow. And that's why it's a bleeding into what? A plastic. They are reducing the red blood cell in the bone marrow. Next is iron deficiency anemia. Iron deficiency anemia, I want you to add there, 9 to 15 months. Very common in the children from 9 to 15 months of the age. What do you monitor the child who has iron deficiency anemia, underline the word developmental. They're not developing normal because they are anemic. Delays, underline the word, is learning impairment and behavior disturbance. See how your questions are? Not all the time anemia is weakness and tiredness. Here in the child is a little different. What do you monitor for the child here? Development. And what is the development delays here? Is their learning process. They're delaying learning impairment. Next is give iron is good. Maximize uh, absorption with give them fruit juice, especially with vitamin C. Do not give them with milk or antacids. Your iron do not pick up your answer with milk or antacids because it decreases it. And if you have liquid iron, we are using the straw, stain the teeth. And side effect are dark stool and constipation. I want you to add what kind of cells are in iron deficiency anemia. Microcytic, micro means small. So I will write down here microcytic and hypochromic is the red blood cell. Very important, there are red blood cells are low, but what kind of that are is called, is micro, M-I-C-R-O, microcytic word. Microcytic, and second word, hypochromic, red blood cells. Very important that we know they are called microcytic and hypochromic red blood cell. And is affecting learning process in the child. Diet is important. You give the children with the diet more with the iron. Very common age 9 to 15 months. I will move on a little bit word aplastic anemia. We all can answer some of the questions, so iron deficiency anemia in children common. 
aplastic anemia and the line the word bone marrow. We got to remember the word bone marrow and why causes is agent myelotoxic agent any medication can cause virus infection immune system and what are they converting very important in a plastic is rbc bone marrow conversion into yellow fatty bone marrow so they convert the red blood cells into the yellow bone marrow. Very important are medication, chemicals, drugs can be, your question, can be affected bone marrow and can be also immune system. How do you treat them? Therapeutic management. Their immune system is low. Immune suppressive therapy, bone marrow, transplant, BMI, bone marrow transplant. So aplastic anemia, there is a destruction in the bone marrow they're treating by giving is what? Bone marrow transfusion. And next is data collection. When you give a lot of blood here, and what would be the pa patient with aplastic anemia word they will use here? Pencytopenia. What is pencytopenia? All the cells are low. It affects them is erythrocyte, not only is we are talking white blood cell, there may be the red blood cell, erythrocyte, leukocytes, white blood cell, and platelet can be also affected, and that is the word is called pencytopenia. Everyone remember aplastic, bone marrow, bone marrow transfusion, another word is pencytopenia, and pencytopenia means all the cells are lowering. And what does it lead to? We all know they can bleed. They can have weakness. They can they feel tired. How do you treat them? By giving bone marrow transplant and also steroid and cyclosporine or maybe a platelet transfusion. Send immune, immune system medication. So cyclosporine, send immune are to improve immune system, platelet transfusion, they can give them. So remember the wording. Very important. As you see question, you see aplastic anemia, you're going to what isolation here? Reverse isolation. And what is the word they might throw that? Pencytopenia. What is the word pencytopenia? All the cells are affected. I will move on to hemophilia word. Now what is hemophilia is deficiency of factor, correct eight, and hemophilia is nine, and is also called Christmas factor. So eight and nine, it's a deficiency of clotting factor. Deficiency of, I want you to highlight the word coagulation protein. They use the word protein. So coagulation protein. So what is hemophilia? Deficiency of coagulation protein and factors are missing. And is transmission, and is also another thing I want you to highlight. It's a sex linked disease and affected in male and carried by female. Half of your question sometimes hemophilia is what? Is a disease is to the sex link, is in the male, carried by the female. And you're missing clotting factor. So everyone is okay, hemophilia, coagulation, protein factor eight and nine are missing, and that can lead to hemophilia. So what is in factor eight is they are clotting. These are coagulation. So what would be the problem? Bleeding. Underline the word, any question on hemophilia? What are you going to do to protect your patient from bleeding? And joint pain and they can also lead with the joint pain. And what is the word they call for joint pain are, and they're bleeding, hemoarthrosis. They didn't have any other word, and they just throw the word hemoarthrosis. So write down the word hemo. Hemo means the blood, hemoarthrosis. They didn't give any question, and they just said, what do you monitor 
child is admitted with hemophilia, an answer may be hemoarthrosis. So the wording is important, terminology is important. Hemoarthrosis means are the joints, and what do you monitor the joints? The bleeding inside the joints and the pain. So the word is hemoarthrosis. So we can add that wording. And coagulation protein, very important. What is hemophilia? Coagulation protein deficiency, factor eight, factor nine. And what does it cause? Bleeding in the joint and pain, swelling, limiting range of motion because they're painful, they're bleeding. And what do you prevent them from? Range of motion, they're limiting, bruising. Next line, they're bleeding. So what do you do on hemophilia question? Prevent the child from bleeding. Precaution. How do you treat them? Underline the word, give factor A, concentration. Missing factor, they give them. And I want you to add that they can give IV. So in your treatment intervention, IV, they can give missing factor. And maybe it says, give, is coagulation protein factor A. Another one is called DDAVP. But DDAVP is not given IV. So write down on the top. Not, they can only give factor A. But DDAVP stimulate the production factor, missing factor, that means factor eight and nine. So DDAVP helps to stimulate the factors, that means factor eight. So what is the immediate treatment would be to give the factor eight. Are we clear? And you can give them IV. Joint pain, monitor, anywhere when we are having a bleeding problem. Bleeding can be anywhere. Maybe question can be second line. Monitor level of consciousness. Why? Bleeding in the brain. Are we clear? So bleeding can be all over. Remember that. Now, not only the joints, bleeding can be anywhere in the body. So what happened if cerebral hemorrhage, you're having a bleeding in the brain, so what do you monitor? Underline the word intracranial hemorrhage and level of consciousness. So keep that in mind. What is hemophilia is disorder of bleeding and missing factor. And I said the word is called coagulation protein. And how do you treat them by giving IV is factor, which I'm missing, but they can also give DDAVP. So your first answer would be that. Also, you are monitoring neurological. Why? Because if they have cerebral hemorrhage, then they, you've got to monitor ICP and that. Immobilization can be on the joints. Elevation, ice, you can apply. Apply pressure for 15 minutes. Protective devices, knee pads, elbow pads, anything to protect from the bleeding. So everyone remember two, three wording, very important here. Hemophilia, coagulation protein, factor eight and nine. How do you treat them? By giving IV factor eight. Bleeding can be anywhere. So, some of the wording are here, maybe you have never heard it, or even you heard it, but you don't remember, but very important for NPLEX. So next page. I will move on, is von Wilburn disease. And what is that disease is, underline the word, hereditary. And it is a bleeding disorder. Then you will go on, defect in protein. What is it, bleeding disorder and defect in protein. So what is one, uh, this disease is? Bleeding disorder again, but it is hereditary. And what is the problem here again? The word defect in protein, same as factor eight. Second line is protein also serve as carrier protein factor eight. So underline that word. And tendency to bleed in the mucous membrane. Sometimes they use the word platelet damage platelets, the bleeding clotting factor, platelet, they stick and damage instead of mucous membrane, they use the word endothelium. Endothelium means inner layer. 
and mucous membrane. So they start bleeding. And what does it cause when they are bleeding? What do they cause here is the bruising. So what do you monitor? It's a bleeding disorder. So when you see this word, remember the word, its effectors are missing, protein, coagulation protein again. And remember the word, they are bleeding inside their mucous membrane, or the other word I said, endothelium. Endothelium means the layer inside we call endothelium. Endothelium and the platelet, they are bleeding inside. So it's a bleeding disorder. Remember the word coagulation protein. What do you monitor? The patient, again, is a bleeding disorder, bruising, and epistaxis. Maybe somebody is having too much of period in the monthly period, excessive bleeding, and clotting factors such as hemophilia, and they treat them as giving the clotting factor eight. That means same as hemophilia. I think we should take a break. I know you guys have been sitting patiently.